and Mason Gillis. We have microphones. Raise your hand. We'll get to them. Go ahead. Okay, Zach. The obvious. Did you call bank? I'm, I'm the best shooter in the contest. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty good. What are you having that little graphic they posted the other day? Uh, for Zach and, and Mason, it's obviously likely your last game against the Avers. How big was this for you personally? Uh, it was big. Um, we, had, we owed him after last year. I think me like and all the seniors, like we all really felt like this is our last time to, to really to give it to him, to prove it to him, to to come up with that fire, and I think that's what we did. Absolutely, I'd back that up. You know, they swept us last year, and so that was definitely on our minds. And I, I love the way that we prepared for them this year and how we carried it to the game. Um, another game where the defense early uh, wasn't quite as tight as the rest of the way. First few possessions struggle. What were you guys able to do the next 35 minutes of the game to tighten that up? I think kind of just coming out, uh, we let them get a lot of easy shots. Like they got some back cut layups. They got some. I think they got some offensive rebounds. It was just, it was stuff that we could really fix. Some stuff that we didn't want to let them uh, get. And we kind of fixed it. Brett, I know you've talked about this a lot this year, but just being more aggressive when Zach dies or you know that pick and roll game. How deadly has that been? For defenses where they've got a pick now, are we going to guard you? And it seems like it's basically pick your poison, and both <coughs> options are a pretty good option. Yeah, for sure. Um, I think it starts off with the confidence from the players and the coaches they have in me, um, and just for me to just make the right play. And if it's if it's me, it's me. If it's not, I mean, I'm going to find somebody. And whether that's finding Z or finding the shooters, I mean, that's just my job on the court. So, what was it about the way they were guarding ball screen that kind of activated your scoring? To be honest, I couldn't tell you. I was honestly really surprised um, how I got to the rim a couple of times just with no defense, to be honest. And it just felt really weird to me. But I mean, you just take what they give you. Thanks for early on, switching the game, whether it's Reese or not falling to you guys. And Matt always talks about what you're doing in the shots you make going in. What did, you guys, what did you feel like you guys did well? During that stretch until the three mm. I think our coaches do a great job of always reassuring us that whenever we miss shots, it's not okay to get down about the missed shots. Uh, we want to take good shots, and if we're taking good shots like we did today that we missed, uh, the coaches backed us up. You know, they told us to keep taking those shots. Um, and whenever you have a coach like that, it just gives you confidence, helps you play throughout your mistakes, and carry on into the game. And, um, we ended up shooting well, I'm pretty sure. And so that's what, I mean, that's what the result of it. Whenever your coach has your back and you're confident, your players have your back and your confidence uh, level stays high. So, yeah. Brayton, you had uh, four steals this game. A lot of them getting inside on big guys when they were dribbling. Is that something you saw on tape or just something uh, that presented itself in the game? Yeah, it was a little bit of that and then instinct. Just, I mean, they turned their head and they were just trying to back down our big. So, I mean, that's just the right time when they're not looking at you to go try to scoop and get the ball. Great, and Mason, I know you see Zach shoot threes all the time, but to see one go down in a game for him, now what's, it, what's, that, uh, what's that mean for you guys to see that? Yeah, well, I passed it, so I, I was, <laughs> I, I'm good with it. So, I mean, he told me the timeout before, or when we were out before, and he was like, hey, hit me on the, hit me on the pop. And like, I kind of just giggled. I was like, dude, why did I got 20? Like, what are you doing? And, hey, it worked, so. I always tell them, if you're going to shoot it, shoot it with confidence. <laughs> hey, Zach, a couple of times this season, lately, you guys have played through Trey uh, open second halves. Why is that been effective? How are you guys able to space that after the start point? I think it's a lot of times it's kind of how the game flows. I think kind of coming out um, in the second half there, it, Trey just ended up being the right option. Um, and then he got two good looks, and then we started trying to play through him because he had, he had a good rhythm. Um, but we just, it's, we're a very, like, very deep team. Like, we'll just take what you give us. There's a lot of good options on offense. Uh, they decided to kind of give Trey um, post ups to start the second half, and we exploited that. Mason and Zach, a, a couple years ago, you were playing with Jaden, and he's a, he's a different guy with the ball in his hands, obviously, very talented. 
what's the difference playing with a, a guard like Braden who you know maybe doesn't have that kind of athleticism but sees the game so well and, and kind of has that IQ? Well, I think um, Braden does have a really people count out his athleticism a lot. I think he's a really good athlete. He's just short. <laughs> but he's, he's a really, really good athlete. <laughs> But they just play differently. I mean, Braden was really looking for a shot. Uh, Braden was kind of looking, looking to really spread the, the the ball around. So it's just different players kind of have to figure out how to integrate my game with them, and, uh, play off them. I mean, personally, I think I'm the right height. <laughs> when you play with people that are seven four, six ten, I mean, of course, I'm gonna look small. So I mean, it's whatever. Mason, can you talk about this kind of the differences playing with Jaden and Braden? Oh uh, yeah, I mean, again, the athleticism part is obviously what people want to talk about, but it's how you play the game. I think Jaden was raw early on; everybody saw that. But he develops the coaches. Um, he listens to the coaches, and he develops into a really great player. Same with Braden. You know, I think he came in already knowing how to play the game, but with PJ, you know, always in his ear. I think Braden's came a long way. Uh, just it's really little things. You know, it's not the big things that make a player great. It's the really small things that we see him do in practice every single day, in games. And um, But the thing that they both have is the confidence level. Jaden was a really confident athlete, really confident player, really confident person. And I'd say the same about Braden. You know, he knows how to win, he knows how to play, he knows how to get his players going. Um, and he runs the game. Everybody sees it every single game and I'm proud of what he has become. Both of them really. Jaden's doing great too. Let's go two more, please. Hey, Zach, or any you guys, who's in charge of the free throw chicken? I couldn't tell you. I'm definitely going to go get, get some, though. <laughs> Last one, Joy. This was Zach. Uh, congratulations on the three. Do you have the ball? Uh, like the game ball? I'm going to look for it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, guys. Thank you.